Welcome to MMA Play 365. I'm Newsom, and I'm here to give you the Bayes AI recap from our UFC prediction software from last weekend's event at UFC Vegas 74, headlined by Amir Albazi and Kai Kara France. And as always, inside this episode of the Bayes AI recap, we're going to be talking value, we're going to be talking strong predictions, we're going to be talking education as well. We're also going to be talking a little bit about how to use Bayes AI in order to make bets and cash bets. So, you know, it all goes on in these recaps with the AI and the UFC prediction software, which I think provides a decent amount of value for anybody looking at getting the Bayes AI information, the predictions and the prediction percentage outcomes for every single outcome for every single fight on every single UFC event. Now we're going to start of course with the value section and I've changed this up in the last couple of weeks because I only really use the value side or the value section to talk about fights that you know Bayes AI got or predicted incorrectly but ended up having still having a ton of value from a betting perspective but I've started adding some fights that are a little bit of a coin flip that fights that you know basically I has got correct because I still feel that it's relevant to talk about the value in those fights so the first fight that we're going to talk about is Mohamed Naimov versus Jamie Malarkey now Jamie Malarkey was the biggest favorite on the card with Mohamed Naimov of course being the biggest underdog on the card coming in on short notice and the previous fights of Naimov, you know, not really massively experienced and gone to a couple of split decisions. So, you know, you could understand why Jamie Malarkey was the biggest favourite on the card. However, I honestly, when I saw the initial predictions from Bayes AI with this fight, I genuinely thought we were going to have another fight that goes into the bad prediction section, which we don't normally or often talk about from a Bayes AI perspective, there's not that many obvious bad predictions where I've looked at it pre-fight and thought, no, that's terrible, and then it's played out in the way that I've thought. It does happen from time to time. I genuinely thought this was going to be one of them, but Bayes AI predicted Naimov to win at 51%, so it is a coin flip with a very, very, very slight lean on Mohamed Naimov. So technically, Bayes AI is predicted Naimov to win, just very slightly. Now at 51%, odds implied there is minus 104. Mohamed Naimov was plus 380. So from a value perspective, you just cannot ignore that type of value when Bayes AI is saying a fight should be a borderline coin flip, but then you're getting nearly a four to one ticket at the bookies insane value but then we can go a little bit further so nine off to win inside the distance if you're a little bit unsure of the knockout or submission and you just want to drop it inside the distance which will give you a dq as well you basically get the inside the distance number by adding the ko tko and the submission percentages together and you get 40 percent. so nine off to win inside the distance is only 11 percent less than in winning outright so basically is basically saying if nine is going to win he's going to finish jamie malarkey now at 40 percent, the odds implied there is plus 150 if you were to bet Naimov to win inside the distance at the bookies you'd have got plus 600 you've got a six to one ticket on something that Bayes AI is saying should only happen or should be happening 40 percent of the time and you're getting a six to one ticket on that plus 600 insane value then you we go one step further because Naimov knocked Jamie Malarkey out so Naimov to win by KO TKO is now at 25 percent so look it's a 15 percent difference between the inside the distance so you are playing with a little bit more risk because now you've lost the submission chance as well but to be honest with you you know the submission on malarkey is probably you know very very unlikely so you might have thought to yourself look i've dug deeper i don't think he's going to submit malarkey but i am going to take the knockout straight now at 25 percent odds implied from that percentage is plus 300 so Bayes AI is saying that Naimov to win by KO TKO should be plus 300 at the bookies but the bookies are giving you plus 950 nearly a 10 to 1 ticket so whichever way you look at this fight Naimov to win outright plus 380 Naimov to win inside the distance plus 600 or to win by KO TKO is plus 950 there's just massive 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 value across the board there and like I said for a fight that I thought was going to be put into the bad prediction section for this recap podcast man how wrong was I and how wrong was a lot of other people as well because Naimov came out there and cashed all those juicy tickets so a brilliant brilliant prediction from Bayes AI now the next value spot to talk about was the main event Amir Albazi versus Kai Kara France now look I know there was a lot of controversy with the decision people saying Kai Kara France was 
getting robbed, you know, with the scorecards. And to be, you know, to an extent, you know, the judge that mattered in regards to which side that fight went incorrectly scored round four to Albazi opposed to Kai Kara France. Okay, so Kara France, in my opinion, should have won the fight. And I get the controversy. However, from Bayes AI's perspective, obviously this is an AI, this is a machine, this is technology, and this is also pre-fight. That's got to be clear. So pre-fight, Bayes AI said Albazi to win 62%. It's 62%, the odds implied, is minus 163. So with that in mind, now we know Bayes AI is saying Albazi should be a minus 163 favourite. You go to the bookies. Throughout most of fight week, this fight was a picker. Minus 105 to minus 110, maybe minus 115. It did close on fight day and fight night at around minus 130. But for the most part, you're getting an absolute dead even picker. Minus 105, minus 110, minus 115 on a fighter that Bayes AI is saying should be much closer to a 2-1 to one favourite. Now, regardless of what happened in the fight, regardless of what decision should have been given and what was right and what was wrong, yeah, Bayes AI is giving you a fighter to bet on with value that ended up going to a split decision. So although Bayes AI was probably a little bit off in regards to how much or how close the fight actually played out compared to what Bayes AI was saying it should be playing out at, it's giving you value to go to the bookies and actually make a bet that has gone to a split decision. So I do feel, look, Amir Albazi, there was value enough at minus 105 to justify a bet where it's saying it's minus 163. And regardless of what happened as the outcome of the fight, you would have cashed your ticket thanks to Bayes AI. Yeah, so I know it was much closer than Bayes AI did anticipate, but because Bayes AI said that it should be minus 163 to anybody that's looking for value, that's enough for you to go to the bookies, make the bet. The fight was close and competitive, like the odds suggested it was, but you've cashed a ticket because of Bayes AI. And for that reason, that's why I've added this into the value section. And the final fight in the value section, we're going to be reverting back to a fight that we used to talk about a little bit more and that is a fight that Bayes AI has predicted incorrectly that has provided some form of value. So we've got Philippe Linz versus Maxime Grishin and another one of the reasons I've put this in here is because I did not see Philippe Linz winning this fight. I thought Maxime Grishin was going to be too good for Linz in every single area. I thought he was going to you know really put it on Linz and I thought it was a really good fight for Grishin. So look I've I've been proved wrong even though Bayes AI did pick against Linz so Bayes AI did pick Grishin to win it was again a borderline coin flip so Bayes AI said Linz to win was at 47% at 47% the odds implied there is plus 113 now if you'd have bet Linz early you'd have got anything from plus 140 down to plus 135 plus 130 plus 125 plus 120 yeah so it kept on coming down but just very gradually and I think it closed at around plus 100 so at close you've got no value but if you did bet Linz earlier in the week then you will have got value from the predictions that Bayes AI gave out. And like I say, Bayes AI was saying Lynn should be a minus one, sorry, a plus 113 underdog. And if you'd got any better than that, you'd have got some value there as well. And of course, a cashed betting ticket. Now we're moving on to the solid winners section and we're going to start with an underdog. So we've got Damon Blackshear versus Luan Lacerda. So Bayes AI said that Damon Blackshear to win should have been at 56% or sorry, was at 56%, which odds implied is saying that Blackshear should have been a minus 127 favourite. Very slight favourite, but a favourite nonetheless. Now, Blackshear opened up at minus 125. Bayes AI's predictions weren't there when the, open, when the line was opened at minus 125. But even if it was, there's some very, very slight value there. But then Blackshear got bet down into the an underdog so he got bet down to plus 100 then it went plus 105 plus 110 plus 115 plus 120 plus 125 is where it closed so if you'd have been waiting the longer you waited the more value you would have got but for Bayes AI to say that Blackshear should have been a very slight favorite and he ended up closing a very slight underdog there's plenty of value there and to be honest with you Blackshear dominated and never really looked in too much trouble and he finished the fight as well so all in all a very solid prediction from Bayes AI the next fight to talk about in the solid winners section, Elise Reed versus Jin Yu Fry. Now, Elise Reed, Bayes AI said, 
was 61% to win the fight. At 61%, the odds implied is minus 156. And you could have got Reed. I mean, she settled at around minus 125. Of course, you're going to have fluctuations with different bookies and different betting lines. But the average line was around minus 125. So if you'd have bet at least Reed, then you would have got value from what Bayes AI was saying she should have been, which, like I said, is within the minus 156 range. And you'd have got value based on the Bayes AI prediction on the straight money line. And it, again, it would have been a cash ticket. But with this fight, we can go one step further. So read decision was 41%. Now, this is very high for a decision, in my opinion, but also rightfully high. You know, there's only 20% difference between read to win outright and read to win by decision. She doesn't really have too many finishes on her record. So again, it makes sense. But read to win by decision at 41%, the odds implied there is plus 144. Now, if you're looking to bet this at the bookies, you'd have got anywhere from plus 150 to plus 170. So again, there's value here as well. So depending on how much of a gamble you are and how much of a risk you wanted to take, you could have played it a little bit safer and just took a read money line at minus 125, which is a near pick em. So you're still going to get a decent amount of return for you know the stake that you're going to put on. And there's still value there as well from Bayes AI. Or you might have wanted to take a bigger risk and thought, look, Reed's not going to finish Jin Yufra. It's going to go to a decision and I'll take the plus money number. There's still value there from Bayes AI. I'm just getting a better ticket and more ROI return on investment should the fight win. Well, should the bet win with Reed winning by decision, which of course she did. So, And it was unanimous as well. So a little bit of a less of a sweat. So yeah, again, a really solid prediction from Bayes AI. Not only getting predicting Reed to win at 61%, but getting value compared to the bookies odds and also getting the method of victory correct with value on that method of victory as well. So yeah, solid prediction from Bayes AI there. And the final fight that we're going to talk about in this recap, the final fight in the solid winners section, we've got Kareem Silver versus Ketlin Souza. Now, Bayes AI had Kareem Silver to win at 57.02%. So there's a reason why I'm now going into the point percents. Normally I just round up or down depending on where the final number's at, but 57.02% for Silver to win the fight. Now at 57.02%, the odds implied at that is minus 133. Now from minus 133, you'd go to the bookies and you'd see a minus 200 line at the bookies. So look, there's no value in Kareem Silver's money line where Bayes AI is saying that it should be much closer than what the book is uh, suggesting. And it's in those types of situations. Look, when you are using Bayes AI to make your bets and to use the data that we're providing, then yeah, it's these types of fights that it's going to put you off betting the Kareem Silver money line. Now, we can go one step further here. So Kareem Silver to win inside the distance. That's the KO in the submission added together. And before I give you this number, it is just worth noting that, look, it, Silver is one of those fighters where it's not really easily to distinguish whether she's going to finish via KO, TKO, or whether it's via a submission. Now, the KO was the very slightly higher percentage, and I'm talking a couple of percent here. It wasn't massively higher than the submission, and I kind of understand exactly where it was at. Bayes AI's predictions were at and percentages were at here, and it was actually the submission that happened. So technically, Bayes AI didn't get the exact method of victory correct, but because both the methods of victory, KO and submission were high. At that point, you should have been looking at it and thinking, well, is it worth the risk me actually choosing a specific method of victory or do I just go for the inside the distance? And I think this is one of the fights where it definitely makes sense to go for inside the distance rather than trying to predict a method of victory. But silver to win inside the distance is 56.96%. So just to recap, silver to win outright was 57.02, but inside the distance it's 56.96, which means that you're literally looking at a 0.6% difference between silver's money line and inside the distance. So that's Bayes AI saying that it's very confident that should silver win, it ain't gonna be a decision. Take the inside the distance because you're gonna get a better line and, you know, it's the more likely outcome. Now, from the odds implied at 56.96%, you're getting minus 132. So again, recapping, Bayes AI is saying that Kareem Silver to win outright should be minus 133, but to win inside the distance should be minus 132, which is, again, you're talking a cent off the line. Now, when you're looking at the line you're actually getting from the bookies, 
you'd have got anything from the pick'em at minus 110 to even a plus money number at plus 110. So again, it's always, and this is what I say to everybody from an education perspective of how to use Bayes AI, always look deeper into the numbers because Bayes AI is giving such a low percentage for silver to win by decision. And then you're actually getting value in inside the distance where you've got zero value in the money line. Why would you bet the money line when the inside the distance is that high? And of course, Kareen Silver subbed her in round one fairly easily. It didn't really break a sweat. So again, it's all about hunting for that value, looking deeper into the numbers, looking to, you know, listen to what I'm saying in regards to the education, because you're getting a minus 110 to a plus 110 number for something that is only 0.6% less likely than the plus, sorry, the minus 200 ticket at the book is. So yeah, look, that's it for the solid winners. That's it for the Bayes AI recap for this week. Of course, we'll be back next week from UFC 289 to see where Bayes AI is at there. But again, another week that I'm really happy with Bayes AI, picking some solid winners, tons of value, and again, making people money. We're constantly getting sent bet slips as well from subscribers at MMA Play 365 you know, telling us that Bayes AI is doing a great job and these are the tickets that they've cashed. So again, don't be afraid to, if you know, if you're a subscriber and you're listening to this, don't be afraid to send us those betting slips as well. We're getting loads through at the minute, which we're trying to share on social media. So yeah, all good. We'll be back again next week for UFC 289. I'm Newsom. Thank you for tuning in.